Perfect. OK. So yeah, there's, there's a bunch of different ways I can go about talking about stroke work. But I think what we really need to do is take a step back and not think about stroke work right away. Rather, let's talk about a couple other things. And let's first talk about web applications. Now, we've got a lot of hands raised here that can solve web applications. So I want to ask you guys a question. What do you believe a web, web application is? What comes to mind when you hear that term? Client side. Client side. Client side, OK. A mobile portal that I can access my data on any platform that I am at. Mm. Interesting. I like that. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, say that one more time. Online game. Online game. Yeah, excellent. No, I like that. Okay, that's good. Uh, actually, I think you had your hand up. I was going to say session state. Session state. Excellent. No, good. I really like these answers. So yeah, we got a couple things going on. We have the portability factor about being able to deploy on any type of device through the browser. We got session state, of course. We got online games. I think that's great. You know, there's a lot of different things about what people believe a web application to be, and I like that. I like that broad spectrum because this is what exactly I want to talk about. So let's go into what I think about web applications when I hear this term. So let's start off with something that's not entirely sexy, but is useful. And this is wikipedia.com. Now, when you hear the term application, it sounds very utilitarian. It sounds like, you know, I'm punching in numbers and turning the crank and now pops another number. But an application can be anything. And in this case, with Wikipedia, it's serving a purpose as an application, but it's serving information to the user. It's not doing e-commerce. It's simply saying, hey, we're the world's, or yeah, we are the world's biggest library, free library, and you can get any information you want. In this case, I did a little search on B plus trees because I'm doing a little bit of a side project. And I click on the hyperlinks, and what happens is, is every time I go to another page, there's a request that goes out to the server. The server does the processing. It sends me back a response, in this case it's an HTML page. The browser pops it open, and then I go on and read, and I find another link, and I click on that link. And again, the request goes back out to the server, does some processing, and gives it back. So all the information regarding Wikipedia is all located on some server, Florida, you know, over in Europe, who knows where it is. But all that data is over there. There's no real code going on here. It's just more displaying information. But again, I still believe that this is a web application. So let's go into something a little different. Here we have Amazon.com. So while Amazon does present you information, the idea of this is to entice you to buy. So if I click on the Kindle up here or one of these games down here, you know, it gives me nice informative information. It gives me comments that the user has talked about. But every time I go to each one of these products, what's going on? Well, if I click on the Kindle here, it makes a, a request out to the server. The server says, OK, let me process this for you. It dynamically generates a web page, gives user comments, it might have additional information about other products it might like, and it displays it to you. So again, the data is all held with over in the server side. It does all the processing, and there's not really much code that gets processed over on the client side. Now, that being said, there is a little bit of DOM manipulation going over here and a little bit of JavaScript. If I go and click on these menu items, immediately what's going to happen is you're going to get a subnav popping up. So there's a bit of a user experience thing going on. It used to be, back in the heyday of Amazon.com, if I clicked on one of these buttons, what would happen? Well, it would make a new request out to the server, the server does its little processing, and then sends it back. So I have to wait. OK, now I'm in a new sub-navigation area. Perfect. So on and so forth. So Amazon said, you know, we can make this a better user experience by instead having a little bit of JavaScript and instead, when I put my mouse over, immediately, the sub-navigation comes up. No having to go back to the server, do processing, and then come back. So let's look at another case, Papa John's. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever used Papa John's before, but um, prior to, just before 2011, um, their website was more of a classic-style web application. I click on a button. Sends out the request to the server, it does the processing on the server, and then sends it back. So if I'm trying to put a pizza together, I want to add my toppings, I want to make a size, every time I'm clicking on these things, request to the server, process, give it back, 
press the server, process, bring it back. So you can imagine, at minimum latency, you're talking about 250 milliseconds per request at minimum. That's best. So over time, you're like, eh, you know, it does, it functionally, it works as expected. User experience-wise, it could be better. So Papa John's went through a little bit of uh, renewal, and in the new year, they came out with this freshly designed website. So the idea now is when I go and I want to make my pizza, I'm presented with this nice user interface, and the moment I start clicking on pepperoni, and I click on like olives and onions, you'll see these things glowing, and then toppings will fall down, and I click on the size, and then it will change the size for me. So this is you know, a really interesting user experience. No longer do I have to keep calling out to the server all the time and come back. So some of the, the code has been pushed over onto the server to do the user experience, as well as to work on data more locally. And on top of that, if I do my registration up here, when I'm signing in, I'm signing out, it's making requests using um, Ajax on the back end, calling up to the server, only getting little bits of data, not getting full dynamically generated web pages. So there's one more thing I want to talk about about the jam. And this is, this is something that I found uh, pretty interesting. When I was looking at this pizza, the little things animating and falling down and things kind of flowing over here, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. So I right clicked on it. And what did I see when I right clicked? Flash. This whole thing is flash. Well, that's kind of interesting. So I went over here, I'm like, well, what are they doing over here? Is it flash? I right clicked to no, these are DOM elements. So I inspected further, and looking at the JavaScript code, they're indeed doing uh, Ajax requests. So I'm like, so they got, it seems like they want to have a better user experience, but they're doing a mix of proprietary technology versus open technology, what the web already provides. That's interesting. That's interesting. Think about that. So let's go and talk about what we all love, Twitter.com. I'm a Twitter fury, but Twitter all the time. And their new Twitter um, provides, again, this sort of reinvention. So if you're using the old Twitter, they have some nice user experience, but a lot of the cases as I click on something, go to the server, process, give you back the new generated web page. I want to click on something again. Server, process, go back. So again, functionally, it works as expected. From a user experience perspective, it's like, eh, it's kind of feels a little slow because I gotta wait for these server requests and dynamically generate things. So sir, uh, Twitter clearly went through a reinvention. And they said, you know what, we want to make a better user experience. What we want is to people to click on the tweets that are coming through, and then immediately this this panel comes sliding out, and we see what they're tweeting about, and we see who's retweeted and all this wonderful stuff. And on top of that, the page doesn't refresh, the whole page doesn't refresh. What happens is new tweets are coming through, you'll see it kind of popping down as you go along. So the user experience has been enhanced. You feel that, hey, this feels more like a rich internet application, the, that term kind of gets thrown around all the time. And people feel like it's enhancing their experience. Again, but functionally, from the old Twitter and the new Twitter, it actually does the exact same thing. But we've just increased the user experience. On top of that, we've brought over more code. Obviously, there's a lot of JavaScript going on here onto the client in order to do these really interesting things. And because we have all these tweets, a lot of the tweets, we don't have to keep fetching over to the server. Once we fetch them, they stay local, so we can act on them. Right? So. Oh, that actually smells really good. Well, I'm telling you guys. Yeah, here I am talking. I get to see you guys having like a bunch of food. All right, anyway. So let's let's think about this a little bit more. What did I start off with? I started off with a very classic web application 1.0. Serves up uh, dynamically generated static pages, but doesn't do anything really interesting. But it serves a purpose. It's giving you content, and it does it very well. We move over to Amazon.com. It's information driven, but with the, pur with the purpose of actually purchasing something at the end of the day. A lot of dynamically generated web pages going on. You click on something, a new dynamically generated web page. So you're making requests constantly to the server. Papa John says, hey, we want to provide a better user experience. We want to have that snappy kind of feel. We want to have the data more local. So they use a combination of proprietary technology as well as uh, open technology like JavaScript that already comes with the browser and doing XHR requests and of course doing some DOM manipulations to make little interesting animations. And then of course we get all the way over onto the Twitter side and they're just taking advantage of everything possible when it comes to HTML5. And this is the case of where it looks and feels more like a desktop application, not quite, but it definitely goes down that path. 
So keep all that in mind, okay?